Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today. Today is the closing session of the Global Entrepreneurship Week, which we started on Monday. We, if you remember very well, November 13 to 17 is the Global Entrepreneurship Week celebration across American spaces in West Africa. Um, we are so happy today to have two of our distinguished um, uh, panelists who are going to be discussing with us on the theme which we have earlier advertised. And the theme again is inclusion, removing barriers and welcoming all. Today, our focus will, uh, will address barriers that in, in that inclusivity, and we will explore strategies that will create a more equitable and welcoming environment yeah. for all individuals, regardless of their background, abilities, or social status. I will introduce our speakers today, after which each of them will have the opportunity able to have a discussion on the topic. The first person I would like to introduce is um, no other than Mr. Duru. Just give me one minute. Okay. Emeka Duro is a Nigerian, is an experienced development expert who drives democracy advancement in Nigeria. He collaborates with political parties, elected officials, and civil society organizations to promote political participation and empowerment of women. Emeka's expertise in training, technical support, and policy development has been instrumental in formulating women-centric policies in five Nigerian states. As a private consultant, he focuses on developing national ethical and religious policies to combat gender-based violence in religious institutions. Emeka is also a trusted technical advisor to the House of Representatives Anti-Corruption Committee. His commitment to meaningful change is evident through his participation in the International Visitors Leadership Program, IVLP, and his role as program manager for the United States Government Exchange Program Alumni Association, USGEA Abuja Branch. is a grant, um, a grant project that aims to enhance the capacities and livelihood of women in FIBA community. Please welcome with me, Emeka Diro. Let's put our hands together for Emeka. Thank you so much. Emeka, welcome. Thank you, sir. The next person who is not the least is Florence Tofa, a Ghanaian. She is the director of Mobile Web Ghana, a technology and entrepreneurship hub based in Accra. She has more than 11 years of experience in the ICT for development sector. Mobile Web Ghana runs program, programs such as annual conference called Africa Digital Skills Conference that seeks to create a platform for learning and sharing digital skills across the continent. Across the continent, technology and women empowerment programs. 
She has been a speaker at numerous international conferences and has judged many local and international competitions. Florence is a 2016 alumna of Mandela Washington Fellowship Program and a partner of American Spaces in Ghana. She has a certificate in business entrepreneurship from Northwestern University, a two-year certificate in software development from Meta Water Entrepreneurship School of Technology, and a BA in psychology and sociology from the University of Ghana. She has led and implemented many women's stroke youth empowerment projects and workshops since 2010. Florence believes in empowering young people, especially women, with digital skills. She believes that acquiring the right skills is the first step towards reducing poverty on the continent. And let me also say this, she actively participated in last year's Global Entrepreneurship Week, even organized by American Spaces in the West Africa region. Florence, you are welcome once again to this program. Let's put our hands together for her. Thank you. Are you clapping? Let's clap very, very well. <laughs> and to all our distinguished uh, participants from all across West Africa, and for those who are watching online, we want to welcome you to this final session, the closing session. And we hope we're going to have a very robust discussion today. I would like to call now Daniel, the American Center Abuja Director, to please go ahead with the facilitation of this closing session. Daniel, are you there? Over to you. Yes, Samuel, I'm here. Thank you so much. That was a wonderful introduction um, from Samuel. Uh, thank you so much, all the speakers, for today. Uh, Florence and Emeka. Florence, it's good to see you again. It's been a whole one year. Yes. <laughs> all right. I think it's important that we we'll dive into the main conversation for today. Um, first, like somewhere highlighted about the topic for today. Uh, my first question would be on Barrett, removing barriers and welcoming all. And specifically, I want to ask are there barriers? And I uh, want Florence to take that question first. Are there barriers in entrepreneurship? Uh, thank you very much. And uh, uh, I want to say that. Uh, in our human society with all the structures that we have, there are visible barriers. There are barriers to entrepreneurship. And it's important for us to really take a look at some of these barriers. When we talk about barriers, what do we mean? There are marginalized groups among us. Let's take women, let's take people living with disability, let's take migrants, let's take people with little or no education at all. How do we make these people inclusive in our society? And then when we talk about entrepreneurship, there are a lot of barriers to entrepreneurship. Someone without money can't start business. Someone without the right skills can't start business. Someone who is who has underdeveloped network or connections or access to market cannot cannot really take full advantage. So the, my answer to your question is yes, there are visible barriers. There are barriers that prevent people from succeeding when it comes to uh, entrepreneurship. And these are some of the things that I've mentioned, that we have women, we have uh, people living with disability, approximately 16% of adult population, aged 18 and older, are disabled with noticeable differences between high countries, you know. So if someone is disabled, how do we create an environment for such a person to compete globally and within our country? When we take migrants, for instance, I mean, we've had cases across the African continent where 
people start businesses and they have been discriminated against due to one reason or the other. How can these people also participate in the entrepreneurship space? Let's talk about women, the issues and the discriminations and other things that women face. I mean, some reports shows that like about three quarters of missing entrepreneurs are women. That is the report from OECD, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Half are over 50 years old and one in eight are under 30 years old. How can women participate in this in this space of entrepreneurship and building scalable and sustainable businesses. So my answer to your question is yes, there are barriers and we need to recognize that there are barriers and also take some action. Thank you so much, Florence, for that wonderful opening remarks. Um, Emeka, do you have something to add to that? Um, thank you, Olu. Uh, there are barriers, of course, because um, between Monday and Tuesday, um, we trained uh, about 10 women, you know, um, on how to navigate this economic um, hardship in Nigeria. Like I mentioned, in Piba community in uh, in Abuja here, there are barriers. Um, these women were drawn that, uh, from the, that same community. They have their businesses, yet they don't have, none of the women have business record. They don't have a, a book where they, 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 they keep the records of their business. Um, they don't know. They don't have access to power, for example, alternative power because of um, um, the nature of power we have in Nigeria, and um, they don't have access to. They cannot advertise. They don't have money to advertise their, their their businesses. They don't have smartphone. They don't have access to smartphone. They don't know how to use smartphone to 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 to, to advertise their little businesses and stuff like that. Same or of having access to credit. Um, they don't even have a cooperative uh, in, in that very community, in the community. So some of all of these things are all barriers because we had to start training them on how to have how to have business record, uh, market how to build business structures, business canvas, and stuff like that. Alumni started training them on how to you know advertise, create links, you know, with using canvas and things like that, and also start training them on how. They can organize to have a uh, have cooperative among themselves, and also how they can also, you know, um, assemble solar panels. And now they are saying, "Hey, we can use the solar panel to power our business at night." And now they say, "Oh, I can now have records for my business." So there, there are barriers in, in that actually, uh, you know, you know, you know, affecting women in the entrepreneurship um, sector. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Meka Flores, for highlighting the areas where there are barriers. Uh, Meka, um, let me let me just uh, take a follow-up question on what you just said. Now, I think you've been able to enumerate uh, different levels of barriers. Um, what I want our viewers to hear from you now is uh, what ways are they actually employed at overcoming these barriers, and what are the challenges that you've encountered? Can you speak up a little, sir? So to overcome these barriers, like I mentioned, um, it's something that we gradually started doing in Abuja here in Piba community by first of all, you know, recruiting these women in the community that have small businesses. And this business I'm talking about, it's not it's the normal business that we you know. Uh, these are little businesses, women doing hairdressing, women having supermarkets, you know, selling small, small businesses, women um, frying uh, a, a bean cake on by the roadside, which we call Akara in Nigeria. Uh, women, you know, selling drinks like Kunu Zobo and stuff like that. You know, it's very little, small, um, you know, amount of money in that business. So overcoming that 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 barrier, we felt we should train them in skills around, you know, entrepreneurship. You know, um, skills around how to build their business. They should understand first of all how to um, build their business itself, how to build structures of the business. Do they have customer names stored somewhere? Do they uh, do, do do they have um, um, access to, you know, credit, for example? Do they have what it takes to even get credit from a microfinance bank, for example? And uh, we taught them, we taught them how to 
set up a business record. Uh, no matter what, no matter how small it is, they should have a record for their business. What comes in, how much comes in, and how much goes out, for example. And again, you should at least have a business name, for example, in the worst case scenario, have a business name, things like that. So I come to those barriers because we need you to show, have a bank account somewhere that this money goes in and you can show to, uh, to, to the microfinance bank that you have money in inflow and outflow, for example. And um, if they know that you have inflow and outflow, then how much is the inflow and outflow in a year or in a quarter? And um, how much can you be given as a credit or as a loan to improve that business, you know? So if you can have all of these things, then you have good referrals as well. So what we do is to use the uh, the U.S. Government Alumni Association to say, okay, we can mentor these people, you know, uh, share success story of women who have, you know, excelled in business in Nigeria and in Abuja here and see how some of the uh, women can also act as referee for these women to assess, you know, loans and credit and stuff like that. So we also taught these women how to, you know, assemble solar panels by themselves as a skill. And some of these women felt that after the training that we had on Monday and Tuesday, that they can actually become um, solar repairers in their community, uh, you know, and they're saying, hey, we, I can now, you know, assemble solar panel if given the facility, um, the, 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 the accessories needed. And they are saying, oh, I can also use this solar panel that I've assembled that can, that can power two bulbs, three bulbs, to have power at night, to make more hair, because at night they, they don't uh, sell because there's no power. At night they don't they close their business earlier because there's no power. And now women are saying that we can stay three, four more hours to 10 p.m. to sell, to make some hair, you know, to, to fry more akara, you know, they have more time added to their business. So that is one way we have we've helped to empower these women and you know, overcome this barrier. Thank you, Olu. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, Florence, do you, do you want to add something? Yes, uh, I want to say that, like when we look at companies, startups in Africa, I mean, according to studies, like on the average, the first year when people start companies, 75% of those companies have the ability to survive the first year. As time goes on, like the second year, only 46% of that company can survive. In the third year, it reduces to 25% of companies. So I really want to look at it from a different perspective that, well, is we are given this people removing barriers, letting people start businesses, but we, are, we must also look at the long term of survival of the companies on the continent. So like what it means is that when you start a company in three years, the survival rate is reduced. Only a few companies survive over a long period of time. What can we do to ensure that? Why do these companies fail in the first place? It means that they don't have certain capabilities and certain knowledge and certain abilities to survive as time goes on, to survive over the period of time. So what we need to do is to intensify, for instance, the mentorship. And I think that uh, mentorship and networking to ensure that, look, because th those who have been ahead, history has taught us that people have started companies and they've scaled successfully and they'll be successful in the future. So I think that one of the things that we need to take seriously is mentorship and networking. Of course, we know that startups need funding, startup, but if we, they also have the funding without the adequate knowledge and skills and programs and then exposure it's going to be difficult for them to survive over a period of time. I mean, there should be policy support for entrepreneurs. I mean, like in other countries, yeah, uh, in Ghana, Ghana is coming up with the Ghana startup policy. I mean, that gives a lot of uh, a lot of incentive, tax incentive to start up to ensure that they have free tax incentive up to a certain period. Certain aspects of government contracts goes to startups to create an enabling environment for them, like women are entitled to a certain percentage of certain contracts, you know, policy support to ensure that, look, the startup environment is more inclusive and then has built the startup to be able to survive the shock. Because when someone starts a company today, whether that person will still be active in the space in, the, in four years or 10 years, 
But some companies that we know when we were young, the companies, even big companies, are no longer around. You know, so it means that we need great support to be able to, uh, how do you call it, to be able to beef or to be able to cushion startup to be able to survive and be relevant over a long period of time. Startups' ability to be able to adapt new technologies. Now we are in the area of AI. Like we are amazed what AI can do. Can create content for you. Everywhere you're on LinkedIn, you're even typing there. Say, hey, can I type the things for you? Can I do this for you? AI is doing almost everything for us. How are we equipping startup with the right skills to be able to also tap into new technology to ensure that we are not left behind? I mean, some African countries are still struggling with internet penetration. I mean, some people have overcome internet hurdles in a long time. So we realize that some startup create businesses, they don't have websites, they are not able to connect, they are not able to, like, so we, as I mentioned about the policy support, I'm also mentioning about adaptation of new technologies and infrastructure to ensure that, look, all these barriers are removed. Like, so specifically, there should also be financial inclusion, like uh, uh, my previous speaker mentioned about uh, people guaranteeing for startups so that they can get loan at the bank. Like all this can be supported. Like I mentioned, the Ghana startup policy that is ongoing to ensure that startups have a good, 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 good exposure. Or they have access to capital. They have access to mentorship. They have access to other things. And more importantly, access to education and training. So for instance, Mobile Web Ghana, one of the things we've done, especially for people who have like hairdressers, like, so we just brought them to really build their skill set in craft making like they can build like how do you how do you do earring in such a way that is is the packaging is good and then it gives you an added economic value and gives you because the hairdressers you train some of them would say that look if i don't have business i just sit down i didn't know i could add earring i didn't know i could add a necklace to it i mean so for us it was really a good feedback for us to know that look this is important that people who are less educated, they can also be included. Their skill sets can be built in other areas to make sure that they are also equally taking advantage of what is happening in the economy. So these are some of the things that I want to, I want to, I want to add and create networking opportunity for people across across various industries. So for instance, I mean, it's open market assets. It also opens a lot of opportunity. I mean, there are so many opportunities around the globe for entrepreneurs. Recently, when I was in another country where entrepreneurs were presented, I saw that, look, the entrepreneurs in that country could equally connect to entrepreneurs in another country, like avenues. If there's an entrepreneur in Nigeria who is doing maybe leather, leather shoe making or beat making, of course, just connecting the two, they could share ideas, they could share other things. And these are some of the things that we don't do. And, and doing this opens up a new market area for, for them. And also, for instance, one of the things that we need to also do is school programs that bridge the public and private schools. I know private schools in Ghana, when you go there, they have computers, they have high level, they like they're equipped with everything. But when you go to the public schools, they don't have computers, they don't have anything. So how do we bridge this gap? It's bringing like, for instance, mobile webinar, you know, what we do is when we do programs in, at the Americans, American corner of Boba, is that we target the public schools. We bring public schools together to give them exposure, like STEM exposure. So how do you, so that the person is in the public school, but equally have the same exposure as somebody who is also in the private schools and the exposure to entrepreneurship and other things that the person can do. So these are some of the things that I, I, I think that when we do, we will equally be more inclusive, we will be including people, we would be removing the barriers, the barriers and encourage people to have equal playing fields irrespective of where they are. Thank you so much, Florence and Emeka for sharing this wonderful talk with us. Um, like you would all agree with me in that uh, majority of our participants watching us this morning will also agree that the major barrier has been finance. Most of them will tell you that we don't have funding, how do we access loans, how do we access finance um, to start up a business, to do something meaningful 
with our lives. Uh, in as much as finance has been a major barrier, it's been an ongoing conversation from the beginning of this week from Monday to now, where a lot of our participants I keep asking, where do we get finance from? Where can we get the funding and all of that? It's, and to a large extent, it has been a, a huge uh, disappointment for a lot of people, especially when they are not certain where they can get finance from to start up. What would you encourage this group of people who usually feel that, no, I can't find finance anywhere. Um, I can't support myself financially to do anything. I don't know what you think is in there for them. What do you suggest? What, what advice would you give to them? Or are there avenues where they can actually easily access finance that you want to suggest to them? I'll start with Monica. Yeah, thank you, uh, Andrew. Um, Thank you so much also, Florence, for, for sharing that also. So I'll start by saying that women need to organize. They need to organize. Because um, when we help or when women organize together, and if this is one of the issues that that is um, they, that they are facing in their community or in the state, then they, can, they should now take the information to the the lawmakers that are representing that very constituency. So there's what we call constituency outreach, where um, lawmakers uh, interact with the citizens to gain knowledge of what is happening in that constituency. Uh, if there are town hall meetings, uh, if there are ways that um, through organizing the women can make their voice heard through the lawmaker, that's uh, another avenue. Because I think uh, there's a lot of money being thrown around constituency projects um, here in Nigeria and possibly other African countries. But again, this thing can be channeled properly to look at how to support entrepreneurship of um, uh, and the business of women in that community or in, in that very state or you know, constituency itself. Um, first of all, with organizing um, comes the action itself and engaging these lawmakers. So women can also come together and have um, women policy or women uh, agenda in that very constituency. So if, uh, let's say, I'm in Barnawa Kaduna constituency or I'm in Oka community constituency, Oka North, Oka South, or depending on the place, then you can say, uh, this, this women we've organized together, this is our agenda. What we want is a gender responsive budgeting. For example, we want 5% um, of the constituency um, budget to be a month for, for business support or for business growth or some sort of um, you know, facility that will help to train more women. Because um, like she also mentioned that women need mentorship. So, but again, um, a lot of women that want to go into business should also learn the skill. I'm an Igbo man from, from Anambra State. And what we do more is to also go into um, that same trading itself. We learn businesses for three years, four years, five years before embarking on our own. So, but again, um, some of these consistent projects can focus on training women to, to have the skill that is needed first. And uh, I've mentioned organizing, I've mentioned action planning, um, and I've mentioned engagement, I've mentioned gender responsive budgeting. Now I'm also saying that they should have the skill itself for that business because uh, to be sure that they can actually, you know, go into that very business itself. So, and apart from that, also um, they will need, um, they, they, they need to follow up with the lawmakers because if the lawmakers understand the issues of their constituency, then the lawmakers can bring that issue into budgeting itself. And once this, it's, it's been budgeted for, then there could be implementation of that very um, aspect of um, empowerment for women in that constituency. Um, for startups in that constituency as well, the committee, the, the, the lawmakers or the government in that, in that area can actually set up, you know, uh, a training center, for example, you no. Know, there's a Akolo training center that is in that is being run by I think um, is it Osita Chiroka in uh, in in Abia or something like that. There's one in in uh, in Obosi as well. Some of these centers keep on um, around around the clock, you know, around the year, keep training out um, people who would they have trained, and also keep providing technical support for them. Yeah, thank you, Anda. Thank you so much, Michael, uh, for that. Okay. Lawrence, do you want to add? 
Okay, so uh, there are so many sources of funding for entrepreneurs, uh, especially when you are starting. The, uh, I mean, there is a, a saying that if you are starting a business, you can start with the three Fs, which means you can start from the family, get uh, identify your family members who can support you. You can start with friends. And then the third is the, you can start with it's the people who are willing to give you money. They call it fools. So they call it the three Fs, family, friends, and the fools. But it's not, they are not fools, but they are people who can just give you the money and then let you play around with it and see what can come out uh, with that venture. And so those are the three Fs that you can you can really fall on to, to get some, some money. I mean, a couple of companies that I started in the past, I guess it's my friends who supported me because at that time, nobody knows what will come out of the business. People are not a reservist to give you money to just go in. They don't know. And so those are the three Fs. The second means you can start, you can get funding is through competitions. And I think that sometimes we can, we don't look at that much, but lately there are a lot of competitions for startups like global and local competitions. In Ghana, the president organizes a couple of competitions. There are group entrepreneurship, uh, 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 innovation competitions that at least if you get somebody to guide you, you could win some money from that competition. And uh, the, other, the other way to get money is to save bootstrap. Like bootstrapping means that you are using your own money after a period of time, you bootstrap, and then you invest it into your venture. And then you start running your business. But one of the means that I've also discovered that is uh, very innovative and sometimes people don't think about it is collaboration and partnership. And I feel that, so if I want to do something, I feel that there's a partner that is bigger, that can help me, that can I can stand on the shoulders of the partner. I think that it's also a means you may not, they may not give you money, but you can stand on them. Like for instance, you can partner with an American corner and organize a training program that you had wished that you organized, partner with the alumni association and do. It means that your venue is catered for, other things are catered for, you would achieve what you want to achieve. So these are some of the sources of funding for entrepreneurs. And then if you are if you are more established for the sources I've mentioned are for early stage, idea stage entrepreneurs. If you are more established, then you can look at equity funding, you can look at loan, you can look at other if we, that is if you are more established and you have records to show mm -hmm. about what you are doing, then you can dive into the more established and play in the waters of the established businesses where you go and then you're talking about equity, you're talking about uh, uh, debt financing, you're talking about other forms of uh, uh, sources of fin financing in, in the country. Thank you. Thank you so much, Florence. Yes. Uh, so my my fourth question would be, you are both entrepreneurs, and of course you have stories to tell. And today our participants, indeed they are eager to know your stories. What exactly has been your story? When you started your own business or when you assisted somebody to start his or own business, what did you encounter at some point? Were you discouraged? What exactly has been your story? I'll start with Florence. Uh, my story is not so different from uh, uh, many other startups. And uh, I think that one of the things that I would say if you're starting your business is, I mean, you start with a lot of fancy uh, projections. I mean, when I I judge competitions for startups, I see when they pr present their 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 revenue over a period of time, it's like hockey stick. I'm starting from here, and then my company is going to earn five million dollars in the. I'm like, okay, I mean. The proof of the pudding is in the eating, right? It's only when you start. And I also had such ideas, you know. Oh, as soon as I start a business, I'm going to make so much money over a period of time. And when you start, you know that, look, 
it is not as easy as just having the money or it's not easy to even convince even people who give you their words that i'll use your i'll use your product you to get to a time that you really have to struggle with them they will you need to really prove a case before so what i'll say is that look in entrepreneurship is a sacrifice you must be willing to sacrifice something, have a, some sleepless nights, have, because that's the thing you want to make the thing work, have some sleepless nights, have, make sure that, I mean, there are others that you completely see as collaborators other than competitors. There are others, of course, that you should also see as competitors, but identify people that you can collaborate with. It just increase your capacity that look now you are collaborating with other partners in, and now you can you can go. So my story, my journey is that I started way back in 2009. So I started by blogging, just having a portal where I want to do more of an online, but it hasn't been easy. And then I dive into other businesses that have failed woefully, <laughs> that have failed. And I, I, I noticed that this business is just sucking my, my money. I'm like, okay, let me just put it on hold and then do other things. And then come back and see. Or even I even gave the business franchise to, to other people to see how they would work, just to make sure that they are. But you see, all these things are a journey. And so it hasn't been an easy journey. And that's why I'm saying that, look, you there is a knowledge base now. When I started in the year uh, 2008 or 2009, there was the amount of knowledge we have online about entrepreneurship, about startup, even like American spaces, like technology house, providing knowledge base, all those things were not there. So you have to now do like, you are hustling, like find your own knowledge. You don't know what works, you are trying and error. But now there is a whole lot of knowledge base in technology hubs, in American spaces across the world. I believe that when you take advantage, your success rate, that's why I put the statistics of failure of startup across African continents. And as you look at the map, there's a map. Once you look at the map, each country has its own uh, failure rates that they deal with. As you look at the map, you notice that it's a real issue. And so these are some of the things that we need to take advantage of the knowledge hub we have, like the American spaces, the tech hubs, and also be willing to be mentored to be to be for people to help you. So my journey has been has been more of uh, let me try because those days internet wasn't freely available and you're just doing your own thing and you, you don't know what you're doing. With time, then if I had known, I would have my business would have been different by now. So that's how that's how the journey has started for me. Thank you so much. Uh, Michael, over to you, please. Yeah, I'll just say um, maybe three or four points. First, um, skill. I mean, every business, you, you need to learn that business itself. You know, like she said, people just come up, put uh, posters everywhere, very fine, you know, clean posters. And I mean, I mean, you thought the business has been there for about 10, 15, 20 years, but they actually just started. And the posters are offline and they've not shown any product, you know, they've not shown anything. They've not, you know, I mean, for example, for example, if you tell her and you don't sew any clothes, but you have people that can sew very well, and you just you're a link person between the teller and the, the, the end users, and you already say, Oh, I'm a teller, you know, I'm a fashion designer, I can do this. But you yourself, you are you are more like a marketer, you know, instead of calling yourself a fashion designer, because you don't design, you don't sew any, and things like that. So I think for me, I think it's about the skill itself, getting the skill itself, because no matter what it takes to get the skill, you know, for example, in Telerade, you can you can actually get the skill, you know, itself, and you can sew itself, and even if you're going to market, yes, but at least get the skill as well, and, you know, grow the company. So people should, should allow this business to grow. It has to grow. I mean, it needs time to grow business. You don't set up a business today and next week you think, um, of course you have, of course, if you, it depends on the amount that you have, you can keep putting your personal money. But again, you should know the amount you are already putting into that business itself. So if you're putting 100,000, know that you're putting 100,000 and you want to give an account of that business, of that 100,000, how it, it went through in that business. It, maybe it goes into uh, preparatory stage. Business have different stages that it grows as well. 
and then progress with her cosmetic stages as well. So, so you know that you are, you have different stage for business to grow. So, um, I mentioned skill. I mentioned time. You need time itself. Then again, consistency. Yeah, sorry, you are consistent in in that very business itself. If you're not consistent in it, you know, I mean, you can't really become an expert in that very business but it's good you can also do more than one business yes but you have to be consistent people should know you for that very business if all you do is selling of um, used um, wares then let it be that you have been known for selling used wares there are different grade of used wares which we call um, in Nigeria we call it um, tokumbo or you know so but you know my point is be consistent in it and be show it everywhere. You have your WhatsApp status. You know, I have uh, cousins that on their WhatsApp status, they advertise more than 100 items in each night between the hours of 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. They are 6 to 10 p.m. that people are more relaxed and people used to gossip, gist, and all that. Use that time to advertise on your WhatsApp status. It's a minimum standard, minimum standard. It's free, for God's sake. It's free. So um, young people, women can do that as well to use that time to you know, to advertise on WhatsApp status. On Facebook, for example, it's very easy to put advert on Facebook. There's a lot of discussions on Facebook. You can divert attention to it. If you cannot pay for adverts on Facebook, you can advertise on your own wall and get people in and say, hey, I sell this, I market this. On WhatsApp status, you can on WhatsApp itself, you can put your what you do on your WhatsApp name itself. You can be called um, um, uh, uh, Timmy Clothing. You can be called Timmy um, um um, on spot food or small chops, you know, I am I make a small chops, you know, or you know things like that, so that people can just open your name and see that this is what you are known for and these are things that you can do easy, easily. And your phone numbers are are just there. Call me for for this, you know. Call me for that. Call me for this. How people brand your business is also important. You don't need big posters to brand your business. So branding is another aspect. He said that you go straight and let people know. In your first discussion, some WhatsApp people, what, once somebody sends you a WhatsApp message, what should go to the person is like, oh, welcome to my, you know, this, I sell this, I, I make this, I'm good in this, you can, this is my phone number, before you even start the conversation itself. So um, it's very good to know that you, how you, you know, you brand your business is very important. Then again, like Florence has mentioned, you know, time to close a business and start up new ones is also important. Some business, you don't need to keep having it. If you are having serious issues, getting that business to keep going, at, I mean, you just close it up and start new one. Probably speak to a mentor and learn new skills that is needed to grow that business. Then you can close it and, you know, rebrand that business and, you know, you know revamp the business and bring it up, you know, in, in a better way, you know, you know in, in a better form for people to know what the business is all about and how people can benefit from that business. When people know that, know the, the what they can gain from your business or what your business can provide for them then they will look out for you thank you thank you so much emeka i know those, those were very wonderful talks you just shared um one thing i wanted us to also quickly highlight is the issue of failure um and because of our conversation, I think we've not said so much about failure. And most of the times when people start business, this business end up failing. The question will be, how many times do I need to fail before I give up? And or how many times do I need to fail before I succeed? Uh, for on a personal note, I've started um, two businesses before they didn't work out. And to an extent, I, I give up that if I didn't succeed in this two human endeavor, why should I continue in this line? So uh, we have a lot of participants here today who are just like me, who have given up. What would you advise? What would your advice be for them? I'll start with Florence. Uh, this is a very okay. tricky question. Uh, there is no straightforward answer, but I think that 
if you don't still have a passion for what you're doing, you still feel that uh, the business is taking more from you, like you are just left like you are just left and you also don't have any your knowledge base your and also you don't have any guidance you know you don't have any guidance i mean it takes it takes a very long time for companies to succeed it's not just a year it's, i mean as i mentioned the statistics as time goes on more and more companies fail, and so those who are willing to survive need to really do a lot but i think that we underestimate the fact that business is work business mm -hmm. is is business is work and uh, so for instance you can't start a business and you are on a, a roller coaster you're like you are chilling somewhere you are partying some I mean, is you should have fun you know it's it's not it's not it's not a bad thing to have fun but also not investing properly investing time making sure the structures of your businesses are established making sure that you have a solid team that you are working with it really becomes so the first business, the business I started that I closed down, what I noticed from my lesson is that, I mean, I didn't have a, a solid team that I, I was working with. I mean, so, and then the team that was on board, I mean, the, the major concern was what they could take from the business other than what they could contribute to the business. And I thought to myself, as I was, I was bootstrapping by then, just bootstrapping. And I saw that, look, after I, and then I wasn't able to get returns like some returns over a period of it wasn't one year over two years it wasn't like ten, three years and i the the team was not solid i felt that look, the team is everything you can have a business and then the team is solid they are committed they are passionate they really want to make this happen come on with that team on board even if the idea is to create a square as time goes on it metamorphoses and so he said, oh, he said, people don't like square, they want a circle. They know that you are adapting and changing as time goes on, you will achieve some success. But if it is not like that, then I, I think that it should be time that you should call it, or you should pause and say that, look, I want to go and dive, read, get some more knowledge before before I come back again. So it, it's really relative. I can't give A or B, but I think that if you yourself do your analysis. And that's why I tell business entrepreneurs, look, whether you are a male or you're a female, you should really have your thinking cap on always and really be analyzing different factors. Other than that, it's you would you would you would be you would be surprised. And that's why I ask I'm asking businesses that as AI is coming, how are you or AI is with us? How are you trying to embed some aspect of AI into your business? I mean, you can be, people said it's futuristic, but now how are you, are you learning anything about AI? Are you doing anything about AI? Because people had typewriters, that's how it started. Before they realized computers have taken over all their jobs and now they are wondering what job do I do? You know, what job do I do? So that's, that is what I would say that it's not casting stone, but you need to do your, your analysis and say that this business it's not fruitful. Let me either adapt and change the products or the services, or I close it and start something new. Thank you so much for those wonderful thoughts. Um, let's go to Mecca. Mecca, over to you. Yeah, just very, very short, you know, to, just to add to what she has said. I think, I mean, apart from, you know, of course, there's in, even in life, failure, I mean, it's, they are part of the challenges we all face, you know, because it comes in it's, 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 as part of the cycle, in the business cycle as well. There's also the downtime and there's also the time where business, you know, blooms, you know. So, and um, I think for me, I would say to overcome failure, you need to just start small. Um, if a lot of businesses, if a lot of entrepreneurs learn to start small start with what you have some businesses do not need a lot of capital to start some of this some of the businesses some people already have what it takes to start you already have you are a young person you're a woman or a man you already have a house you don't need to go and rent another office you don't need to go and rent another house 
to start up the business. For example, you don't need to pay rent elsewhere. So why will you go and pay rent of 100,000 when you are trying to start small? For example, I live in Abuja here. A plaza, it, in some of the shops in a plaza costs as high as about 500,000 Naira, for example. You know, up to a million. Why do you want to pay that amount of money when people have not even known your brand, for example, you know? And again, uh, Florence, I, I like those statistics you gave. In 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 Nigeria, in Abuja, a lot of businesses in we say to uh, foods after they finish paying the first one year, the next year, those shops are closed. They move out because they don't have customers that can they can't sustain that business. And in the next two years, you, you can't find those businesses because they cannot self-sustain itself. You know, so the, we should learn how to start small. Start with what we have. If we already have a house in where we live, for example, why not start a business in that very house that you are? Mm -hmm. if, I mean, if you already have, um, you have a uh, what you call the the gas or the you know the oven, and you can, that you can start baking at home. Why do you need to go to another place to open up a shop to start baking? Bake from home. Let people know about the the buns and the puff puff and the cake right from from the house. Uh, the the lady that makes my my birthday cakes in at home she she bakes in her house I don't even know who she is I just opened my phone one day I look, looked at the map in the area where I where I live in Kuji and like oh there's someone doing you know cake and place she just she just put it on the map there and I just clicked on it and contacted her and boom she brought and she can supply cake to anyone you know without from the from the com from the from you know from the from from your from the comfort of of her home, so if you don't have to pay for you know delivery, you don't need to pay for rent, you don't need to pay tax. You know there's tax also. The government tax is going to come for you, so you don't need to even pay for advert like what foreign say. People used social media, people used AI, so people just in the map, you can just say this is our girl's kitchen in the map. I mean you don't, you don't pay anybody for that. You can say this is Muhammad Suya, right? On the map. And you just put it. And anyone in that area will like, oh, there's Muhammad Suya. It's just close by in the in, in, in the in, in the heart of Jigawa, for example, or Kebi, or in Oka, or in in or in a door of Potakot, for example. Or you are crying in Ghana. Anywhere. And someone can call you, say, oh, based because you put Muhammad Suya on the map. I'm calling you. Can you supply me Kilishi? Kilishi is very, very, is a, is a, is a good studio that we all like in Nigeria, and, but it's very dry. So my point is, start small. Start from where you are, you know, with the amount of money that you have, so that you don't go borrowing and you cannot pay back, for example. And someone can, like she said, family can give you some, 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 some seed money to start up. And family members can also help you in starting business itself. When I and my mom started our restaurant business, I was carrying the the, the pot of uh, stew on my head and my mom was carrying the rice in the street of Kaduna State. And we moved to Central Market to sell from store to store until we're able to start having our own store, our own restaurant business, and it grows and you start employing people. So you can use family members as your team member, as your workforce to support you for a while before you, you're able to start up. So again, um, she mentioned services. Yes, if the services you're you're up, you're rendering um, is obsolete, let me use the word is obsolete. It has become obsolete. So you know maybe um, although maybe the, maybe the business service is obsolete for the set of people that you know you want it for. So you can re upskill and you know you know you know reinvent that services that is needed for that set of people in that community on that area, for example. So you know. The kind of the services that are needed for you know high brow areas in Abuja is different from services needed in the in the in the in the low brow areas you know or communities in 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 Abuja for example there are different services, and again what you charge you know for example a laundry business you know in a in a in a school community pitch your business to where the services are needed, you know if you have, if there's a campus very close to you what they'll be needed more of course. Laundry business will work well because students will always have clothes to watch. And if you go around collecting from room to room, hostel to hostel, hey, I can wash your clothes and I'll bring it back in 24 hours, students will give you clothes. So for example, so you can start small. Young people can start small. You don't need to get have a, a laundry van before you do that. You can use your normal bag, a carry-on bag, and move to those places and a Ghana, sorry, 
a, a super sack, a sack, you know, that you can also use to pack those things. And you can deliver again, you know, in a, <laughs> you know, in a very short time. So um, again, I still go back to records, you know, people just get a book, get, get just get one book. It, 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 it doesn't cost anything. Write the name of your company that you have in your heart on that very book, you know, they want have the one or weekly kind of record on what comes in and what goes out. What are you saving? Have it. Open up an account where you can put that saving differently, separately. You can show how you have been managing the finance that has been coming in. Records is very important. Then again, failure of business also borrowing affects, you know, when you sell your product without collecting money. You know, as a uh, in Nigeria, we say, you know, there's no this thing today, come back tomorrow, you know. So you give people um, based on, you know, because you know them, you give them your product for them to pay back tomorrow. So you shouldn't do that for business. No, there's no, there's no, you shouldn't give free, free lunch for business. No, people should pay you your money and you give them the services. If you continue giving things for free, the business will fail. It will it will fail. There's no there's no there's no you don't need prophecy for that. So and again, um, we mentioned other things like we need to give time to it. Even even if you work, you can also do business by the weekend. Yes, break your timetable. I can do business in the morning before going to work, or when I come back from my eight to four work. Then you have four to five to do laundry business, for example. You can wash those clothes at night, spread them and iron them, then deliver the next day. And also go to school or do other things with your life. So, and again, you've mentioned, Forrest has mentioned, we need mentorship. We need to understand the other small businesses. I, I, I use the word small businesses that have grown. How have these business grown? Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Emeka. I think that was that was a well thought out plan. Uh, thank you so much for sharing that. I think from what uh, Florence also said initially, that I, I, I think it's something that we all need to also uh, work on is to understand that our business is work. Uh, we have to put in the work. Um, and and, and Mecca went for that to emphasize that we need to learn to start small. Uh, but. Um, we have spoken so much today about our failures. Why don't we talk about success as well so that we can encourage people who are watching us today? How do we manage the success that comes from business? How do we manage the success? We've seen a lot of people who have been quite very successful in their businesses for over the years. We go back to square one. What exactly is happening? How do we manage success? Far and so what you. Um, I think that uh, there is a need for entrepreneurs to really not live a, a new life or something, but uh, do not let the success get into your head too much. You know, if it gets into your head, it becomes like an air. After a while, it would deflate. And then your, the, your normal head would, would be, but I've seen people, as soon as they start making some form of money, they are releasing like the latest car, the big things. Well, the, you are not the business, you haven't, you are not really looking at the business. The business is an entity. It's separated from you, the human being. Mm -hmm. But looking at the business, like you're giving birth, like even children, when you give birth, like you need to really spend money to make sure that the child goes to school, does a couple of things, the child is doing well. Even when you grow old, like sometimes some people still, they are still looking after them. Like to have that mentality that the business is an entity that you need to, imagine you have a child and the child just grows up and and and, and you are rather taking money from the child. You're like you are asking the child so much money than you have actually, than, than the business has actually, and like, think about, and that's why I gave this failure rate, because thinking about the, the long term of the business. 
to ensure that the business survive like uh, over a period of time, even after you. There are a lot of businesses in Europe and other countries that are generational. You could see that this business was started about, the, this is the fourth generation. They've been around, they survived over a period of time. How do they do that? They just don't spend the money, spend their like living a, a flamboyant life anywhere. I think those are some of the things that the business is separate from you. Just like you have a mind that your child, you are spending money, you are taking time, making sure, I mean, you should survive. You should, you need money as you, you pay what is due and then let the business grow. I think have a mind that the business must grow irrespective of you. I mean, one of the things that I think about is the sustenance of the business over a period of time, sustenance plan over a period of time. And these are some of the thinking yeah. that we need to do right from the start. When you are starting a business, like right from the start, how will this company survive after you? It's, it's really very important. And, and, and also making sure that the structures are put in place. I mean, I've listened to a lot of entrepreneurs in the, in the past. I listened to their stories. How have they survived? How have they ab adapted? Like when there are changes, for instance, there are changes, how do they embed the changes to make sure that they are still surviving over the period of time? One is to separate the business from yourself. Ensure that, look, it's a business. The business must grow. Other than that one, we get money. All we need to do is to make sure that we have arrived. Charlie. We are living big. We bought the latest car. We bought the latest other things. You are just killing your business. You're just killing your business. The business, the, if once you have it, the business must come first, that the business must survive first. I mean, if you have such mentality, I'm sure that even when you have money that is you, you are, is due, you, you think about the business first, that the business must survive. We must have in mind that we are building a business, transgenerational business, that the business must survive a couple of generations. And I'm telling you that it's not as easy as just talking that the business must be generational. There is a lot of work. You think about it. who will survive, who will do this, who will do this. It's a who, it's a complex dynamics. But when you start thinking about it, it's a structure, and the structures must be in place, and the structures must play its role. Then you see, you start thinking about okay, the success of the business. So 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 that is what I have to say about. About, about about the success of the business, the sustenance of the business over 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 a period of time. Thank you, Emeka. How do we manage success? Yeah, I think uh, Florence has also given justice to that. So I'm only going to add because she's the expert in this aspect. So um, yeah, I think I mentioned thrift and cooperative earlier. On, you know. Because yeah, it's it helps small business to grow. Because the more you save from that business uh, into a thrift or cooperative, then you can also turn around to use the money to grow the business itself. And you put um the money into what the business needs to grow, you know. So if like if you are if 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 at first you are using, uh, you walk to campuses or people houses, you knock and you collect their clothes to, you know, to clean and stuff like that, you can now move into getting a small motorcycle, for example, to move faster. You know, with motorcycle you can cover if you are, if you are covering, you can cover in a, in a very short time. Instead of spending four hours to do pickups, you can just use. 45 minutes to do pickups or 30 minutes to do pickup and use extra time to do the work, you know. So that means if you are spending four hours to do pickup on foot, you can use um, 45 minutes, an hour on motorcycle. That means you can cover more houses and more pickups, you know. Then secondly, um, we can use the money from the thrift and cooperative to now probably buy a washing machine if you're using hand wash earlier on, you can now buy a, a, a washing machine. Um, if, I, if you have one washing machine, you can actually buy two so that you can now have to wash more clothes and you know 
then it depends on what else you need, you know, your dryer and ironing, things like that. So, and again, with money from your cooperative, from your thrift, you can have a label for your business, you know, how you package the laundry clothes and stuff like that. You can now talk about how you package it, you know, and that packaging can be used as a form of advert as well. So thrift and cooperative can do a whole lot of, um, you know, support in the savings that you save from that business. And you can use those money, you know, you know, you know, you can you can actually put it back, you know, you know, in, into into that very business, and it it can help the business to grow. That's another way I think. And again, communication and marketing itself it also helps, you know, it it's a business to grow, you know, to succeed, you know. Um, these days we we have different, you know, signs on the road saying this happens here, this happens here, so you know. So, so avoid a lot of tax, you know, from the government. Uh, you you may not, you don't have to do a billboard, you know, but small, small signs, you know, to, to show that oh, this is this 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 road, this is the name of this road, and underneath that you can just put a business uh, for your laundry, call this number for this, call this number, you know, um, for cakes or small chops for for you know for for. For, for for party rice and you know party days you can just call you know for suya you know things like that put it under under names you know business um, street street names and stuff like that this street is located here this is the arrow and things like that so communication and marketing is very important and I've mentioned also that managing your success is also sharing your your stories as well and of course making it well known to other aspects you mentioned business structures business structures and are, are very important you know if business need to improve yeah. if business need to grow um franchises there people have mr beast you know people can have franchises of mr beast that different mr beast that different chicken republic elsewhere so um, business can grow you can have an extension of that business elsewhere, you know, yeah. um, if it has worked in community A, then you can also extend it, find someone that buys the idea that can also support that business to grow in in in, in community B, you know, or, com or community C, for example. So that is how I also think business can, you can manage success itself. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, we are open for questions now. For those of you who have questions for us, please um, use the virtual hand to indicate if you have any question for us. Um, and for those, those participants who are on Facebook, please uh, send me your question. We'll pick them up and push them to our speakers for today. Um, in this city, um, please unmute yourself and speak. I can see your hand and meet yourself and speak after being city Oshobo, get ready. Let me sit over to you. Okay, good afternoon, all. Uh, my question regards to handling of uh, success, uh, which even you yourself, the host, uh, brought up. Is it in reality at a point, uh, there are certain businesses that will get to decline phase? There are certain businesses. So at that point, uh, it is usually the founder of the startup usually push it out to sell, or which we usually call buy, buy out. There are also certain times that it will grow, it needs expansion, and the founder necessarily cannot, do not, uh, may not have the know how to continue. It needs to be taken, uh, maybe. Uh, it, uh, undergo a for equity stake or being bought. Mm -hmm. So uh, these are realities that uh, I think the panelists to the, uh, may talk about. It is not that uh, maybe you talk about sustainability or sustainers or I mean succession or letting it to live beyond you. There are points at which you let it go and being taken over by those who can manage it maybe at the corporate level or the higher stage. Thank you so much. Um, please make your questions very brief. 
Katata so should be here. Should we please unmute to say ask your questions? Then we'll go to American Center. Go ahead. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for the session. Although I came late, but it was so good. So my question is, are there opportunities for, funding opportunities for you to integrate ideas out there? And if there are any, can you mention some? Thank you. Naka, please share what you know. Where's yeah, Mark? I was saying um, the first the, the, the yeah, first speaker ahead. talked about um about equity. Yes, I agree with you. And he mentioned, of course, that uh, you know, people that that knows how to manage the business can be left to manage the business as well at some. <laughs> but you know, I agree with him also. So it's it's it, it, I mean it's in line. It's part of what. Where we can help uh, ways we can help uh, manage success that comes from business. Uh, for Shobo, um, I didn't hear her very well, but I think she's asking for how youth can get is it um funding funding. Uh, yeah, yeah, you see, and I, I've mentioned it. I don't know if she was here earlier. When I said yes, funding. Um, Florence has mentioned the the three Fs, you know, and she said family, friends, and the fools, you know. But again. While waiting for funding, my own kind of thinking is, what do you have in your hand first to start the business? I mean, do you have an oven in your house? Do you have an iron to start the laundry? What business do you want to start? That if do you know the business you want to start? You know, do you actually have the skill that you, of the kind of business that you want to go into? So uh, while waiting for funding, before funding comes, how about getting all of these things. So I'm, I'm sure Florence will give you a better answer too as well. <laughs> Thank you. Florence, do you want to add something? I think that you've mentioned it all. And I also mentioned competitions because sometimes at mm -hmm. an early stage, uh, you don't know there are a lot of competitions. Like we have opportunity desk, we have a uh, youth uh, uh, opportunities. Like when you go on, on LinkedIn or Facebook, there's so many competitions. And sometimes all they want is ideas, not even early stage or established businesses or minimum viable products like MVPs, like, oh, you want to develop, uh, well, you, you have a bakery, low, you have started making cake, just an MVP or something. You just enter into the competition. And I've seen great companies being built out of competitions. I mean, some of the companies that we start up, we trained, and all they needed was to enter into one competition. And they won small amount of money and they built it. Now the company is big, it's in other 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 countries. And so sometimes just look, opportunities are available now than ever before. Like in my when I was when I was a baby, like when I was young. <laughs> but now there are a lot of opportunities and because of the internet, the level the, the you can you have no excuse that you you have you can't find opportunities when you even google anything like right now you let's let's say we are googling opportunities for uh youth so many opportunities will come and you know who knows if you got you have guidance to apply for such competitions you'll be surprised that you would you would but also people will not also give you money when you yourself you have invested in it you have invested adequate time you have invested adequate resources you want me to come and give you money for something that you have never invested anything into ah then and then then we, we are joking so people always also want to see that you have also invested time how much time have you so you have not invested the more you are looking for is money to be hard for you to get money as in you were you were explain 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 and there no evidence yes thank you so much Yes, um, let's go to American Center, uh, then we'll go to Kano. American Center, Lagos, over to you. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Okay, so, um, Juan, I, I want to direct my question to Mr. Emeka. Uh, while he was uh, giving us, um, you know, while he was giving us the presentation, he said something about underfunding Say something about lawmakers, you know, your constituency and all that. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I want to believe, Mr. Maker, you are a Nigerian. 
and uh, you know how this thing works. Mm -hmm. uh, between you and I, you know, in fact, in my own area, I don't even know who my constituent leader is. Talk less of meeting up with him. And okay. apart from that, you know all these people, what they do is find a way to look for a borehole and construct in one community and tell you that's what they have done with the construction project. Right. Most of these are uh, uh, small businesses, they are never interested. So maybe there is something you want to tell us that we don't know. If you know any of those lawmakers that are interested in funding businesses, please roll up, roll out the names for us so that we can go and meet them. These things are not just, I have not seen any in any way. That is what that is what I'm saying. So if there's an information you want to pass across that you want to start, that you feel this person, this person is actually interested and can help, then we can actually tailor our request towards that area. Thank you very much. That's my question. Uh, Mecca, do you want to take that? Yeah, I think uh, my brother, thank you so much for that. I like that direct question. But before I before that, I said we need to organize. I mentioned the word organizing. And in that's your constituency, my brother, if you can tell me that your constituency, that constituency have um, representative at least in the state, there's a representative in the House of Representatives, in the national, and there's a Senate. So in the worst case scenario, let's even come down to the state assembly. That constituency have a rep in the state assembly. And that's Lagos, right? I'm sure of. And um, it has also in the National Assembly. First of all, is that constituency have that constituency that lawmaker have a, a and a constituency office in Lagos? I don't know if you are aware of it. They have an outreach office. They have their own office in Lagos. So you to find out where is that office is located. I understand they are all new lawmakers now. So we need to find out. First of all, do you know your lawmaker? If you know the person's name, at least, then we can talk about finding the person's office, the, the constituency office of that lawmaker. Then start looking about looking for the person's phone number. But before these three things happen, you people in that constituency, the constituency of that lawmaker should organize. You should have sat down to say, these are the three major issues in our constituency that's affecting us. Then one of it is that we don't have access to funding for our business, or we don't have what the 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 materials or the make the make or the equipment that will help our business to grow. For, let's assume fishing. If most of the people in that constituency are uh, are fishermen or fisherwomen, for example, they, what they need probably is they need some sort of. Um, um, maybe a, a modern boat or a, a, a refined boat that will help them to go more into the sea to you know to fish um, and probably they need some fishing um you know material uh, should I say equipment okay. as a constituency and it's been managed. So the lawmaker have constituency office and you can write to the constituency office and say these community people, these are the three major issues that we need. We need one, two, three things. This thing will help our business to grow. You tell them what you need that will help your business to grow. And the, co and the cost of those things, if the lawmaker wants to provide those things, yes, instead of giving you generator and giving you grinding machine, he should be giving you people the fishing nets and giving you people the boats to go and fish, for example. So uh, it's about um, um, responsive budgeting, you know, and consistency outreach is important. And you can also organize the event to invite the lawmaker to come and listen to the you people in the constituency to say, to hear your issues and say in the in the level of one to, to, to five, number one, one to three is our major issues. Please give um, attend to any of these issues. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Uh let's quickly go to Kano. Okay, get ready. Good morning to you all. I'm Aisha by name. Thank you for this webinar. I find it very enlightening and interesting. One of the speakers talked about mentorship and networking are essential in business survival. So my question is, how do we find great mentors? Okay. No, it's perfect. 
Yes, so uh, now the opportunity to find mentors are all around us. If you're an entrepreneur, maybe you belong to an entrepreneurial group. Maybe there is an, an American space at where you, within the community where you are. There is an event you are attending. And I think that one of the ways to find great mentors is to really be conscious. Sometimes the mentors are not people that you find physically. They can be even a book you have read. Then now you started about startup like Guy Kiyosaki, who talks about startup and other things, just really following this person. You'll be surprised that when you send him a, a, a question on LinkedIn, he will answer you. You'll really be surprised. So you can find mentors in your own, uh, when you go for events. Even if you're a student, when you, you are, your school, you can identify great mentors, people who have your interests at heart that I want to help this business to succeed or I want to help this person to succeed. And now there are a whole lot of events happening. Every day there is an event somewhere where entrepreneurs are talking. It could even be this online meeting that we are. Like one of the things you could do is to find, go to LinkedIn and Google the names of some of the uh, American speakers or the speakers who have come. Just connect to them. You have an issue, you'll be surprised that they'll be willing to devote some time to just talk to you. So these are some of the ways to find great mentors. Thank you so much, Florence. Okay, let's go to our, let's go to our car, then we'll go to, well, I thought I saw Shinema right now. Good afternoon. Yeah, uh, I have ahead. two questions. The first is that, uh, is it okay for an entrepreneur to, try different businesses until he or she gets the right business. And then secondly, is it okay in the case of a successful business for an entrepreneur to uh, get, uh, withdraw maybe a, a large sum of money from business, maybe to buy a car, or maybe to go on a vacation and relax with family and friends? Okay, I mean, this is an area that yeah. I like. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. You mentioned two questions. He said, number one, is it good for an entrepreneur to buy a car, go and leave? I think that, I mean, my response is that let's stay humble. I mean, one of the ways that I have arrived mentality, we should learn to stay humble despite the success that we achieve. Are you due that money? Are you, so for instance, the, is the project or is supposed to pay this amount of money? If it's supposed to pay this amount of money, you decide to go and buy a car, fine. But please, if you is not due to you and you are just because you are just taking and taking and doing things, then there is a problem. There's a problem with that. And your other question, your first question was what? If you have um, kind of businesses, then. Yes. And I think when you are starting, one of the reasons why I have to close down my other businesses is because I was doing two businesses at the, at the, same, at the same time. So I decided, just like a camera, when you are starting, like when you look at great companies like Facebook, like Amazon, when they started, they were not juggling with so many things. Google was into search, search mm -hmm. brown. And all they were, what they started with, they were known for search engine mm -hmm. uh, algorithms. And Facebook was more into just letting students share pictures. Mm -hmm. And the way they grow and then they're now established, then they are thinking about other things to involve. So if you are starting, there is there is a need for you to focus, just like a camera. If you focus, you can really get the picture clear. But if you are doing so many things, you are spreading yourself thin. And as you don't have money, you don't have other things, you are spreading it thin. You will be worn out. So if you are starting a business, it's important to focus. When you grow, like you're established, you've been around for a long time, you have money like Amazon. Ah, what prevents you to go to the moon? What prevents you to do anything that you want? But at the beginning, it's really important to focus. With time, you can diversify, add different products, and you are good to go. Maka, do you want to add something? Yeah, just to say, you know, you can just also pay, like you can pay yourself salary. Do you understand? From the business. So if your 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 gain is let's assume hundred thousand for the for that month, and your salary is maybe twenty percent of your gain, hmm? 
then you maintain 20% every month of your gain is your salary. You pay yourself salary and you write it. Like I said, have a business record here. Have a book for it. It's very important. So we have made 100,000. 20K is for me. So you would know that 20K is for you for one month. So if you want to flex one month with 20K, for example, so how long will it take you? That's the point here. So if it will take you, you know, so then if you have 200,000 as your 20%, Mm -hmm. That means you can flex for two hundred thousand in a month. The word flex. Again, if you have, if you can make, and your your gain, um, your your twenty percent is two million in a month, and that is your salary. Fine. And again, if you want to buy a car, there there are different levels of car. For example, there are different levels of car. Is it that the car is helping you in that business, like a business car? For example, for you, you have is for the laundry business. But I would like to know when you want to speak like the Orca guy, are you doing a business for now so that we can be sure that we can give you the, the right advice? Are you doing a business? If you're doing a business, what kind of business are you doing? And how much do you make from that business every month? So what you call flex, and she has said, is just peer pressure. It's peer pressure. We all, I used to have a car that smoke used to come out from the inside of the car. <laughs> But today, I, I drive clean cars. My best cars are Ford. I have Ford. My wife drives a Ford. For God's sake. For your car. Hmm? Yes, for oh, those days, I have a car that... Not... If it... Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, let's hear you. I mean, in the case of a successful business, maybe you have a business that generates millions of if, and if, then I believe that the main aim of an entrepreneur is to have a good life. And then maybe you want that at that point in time. So is it okay for you as the boss to make a withdrawal from your business account, buy what you want, your car, and have a good life? That's you have ans I've answered you. You can have a good life, but let it be that if you are paying yourself 20%, maintain the 20%. Don't go and take 80% from the business. Sir, do you hear me? If your salary as the GM of the business, hmm? Eboka and Sons, if your salary is 20%, maintain the 20%. Don't take 80% to go and have good life. That 20%, if it's worth 200 million, please enjoy yourself, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, finally, I have a friend in Okada that loves life. He wants to. <laughs> Uh, my friend, okay, please have a good life. We are, um, we are still with you. We are still with you. Yeah, hold on, hold on, okay. Let's go to Calabar. Let's go to Calabar. Calabar, please, over to you. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Good afternoon, everybody. Afternoon. My name is Patrick Kenezi, and I, as an academic staff and also an entrepreneur, as an academic staff and also an entrepreneur who has worked, having worked with um, different people and interacted with different people from different backgrounds, I want to ask that, how can we foster a culture of inclusivity that goes beyond just acknowledging diversity and actively promotes the involvement of all individuals, regardless of their background. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Florence, do you want to take that? Yes, how can we genuinely foster inclusivity? Uh, I think that it starts with you and uh, myself, like, we must usually when we talk about these things, we all assume that it's the responsibility of someone else. But the responsibility lies on the shoulders of all of us here that we've decided that look, business entrepreneurs need support. You work with the academic institution. How can you support the entrepreneurs in that academic institution? That institution that you are 
you have people with disability. How can you make sure that the environment supports people with disabilities? You have women who have children who would like to use the space. How can you ensure that there is an opportunity for them? Normally, when we talk, in, we, we are assuming that, look, our responsibility, we are only interested in just showing people what to do. But we are the solution. If only we can start from where we are that you take one entrepreneur at a time and mentor the entrepreneur or provide an opportunity or a safe space for the person to operate. That is how it starts. That is how we can ensure that in the year 2030, like when we talk about the SDGs that leave no one behind, that is all how it's going to start that you and I are conscious of the environment. We are conscious of creating the spaces, open space, safe space for people to be able to operate. We are conscious of making sure that the things that we are identifying as barriers, we ourselves, we are the we are the people who are going to make sure that those barriers are removed. And I think that when we do that, then we are genuinely making sure that we are embracing inclusivity in our workplace, in our schools, in our organizations, and everywhere that we find ourselves. Thank you so much. Uh, let's go to Duty, then we we'll go to Radio um, Vivi. Duty, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Duty, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well done to the esteemed presenters and the esteemed. Uh, Just go ahead, ask your question. Go straight to thinking you. About, uh, thinking about starting a business from little to big, how can we contrast this with the saying, the more you invest, the more profit you earn? This is the question. Jamaica, did you, did you get that question? Yeah, please do say. Can you, can you repeat your question again? Please? Repeat your question again, please. Yes, yes. Talking about starting a business from little to big, that is growing a business from the scratch. How can we contrast this with the saying, the more you invest, the more profit you earn? So, I mean, you have also explained it that the more you invest, the more profit that you earn. But again, you have to start the business first. There's a, there's a stages in business, right? There's a stage that you would start a business before you even start making profit. I don't think it's every business that you start on the first day, start making profit. There's some business that it needs time for you to have the kind of customer that you need. For example, when you are, if you are, if you are making food, if you're selling food, for example, you might just make small food to sell, hoping you have customers. Some days you will not sell that food completely you might have a loss, for example. So, and food also perishes, they are perishable. So you cannot use it again. The next day you cook the same food and you sell. But as time goes on, when you have more customers, then you start making gains. So you, like you said, the more, the, the more you know, investment you make, the more gain that you make. So when you start having more customers, then you start increasing. If you're selling two modules of, uh, of rice, you, you cannot increase to four, four, uh, three, four modules or five modules of rice. You don't just go straight to start selling five modules of rice when you've not even, people have not tested your food to know if you can make a good uh, rice or a good jollof rice. Or, a, or, you know, as my sister was, was also on that. And it depends. People need to test your, your kili sheet that it is very good or your suya that is good or that your food is good before they can come back. And now it takes some time. So at some point, you may have to keep a seed money to say, I'm going to run for the next uh, one week, two weeks, three weeks, or a month without expecting gain. For example, you might have to sell, but you may not have the gain or the interest. So from there, you can now get more money to increase the business. And the more you increase the business, perhaps the more the business will now grow. So please, growth is a very important thing. And we've mentioned here that you need time. You need patience. You need there is a consistent 
in that very food and you need, make sure that you have skill already in making that food very good or what you, the services you're providing is very, very good. And your end users can say your service is worth paying for. Thank you. Thank you. So I have a question. My name is Ibrahim Sadibano. My question is sometimes you might hear motivational speakers are saying that they have started their businesses. For example, people that are doing restaurant business selling food, they say they have started their restaurant with one single piece of rice. And sometimes somebody will say they have started poultry with a feather. Just an analogy. Is it really possible in situations like this, the hardship of the country, for example, in the hard economic situation for a person to really start a business without a capital? And my second question is, how patience, how long can a person withstand without run a business without gaining any profit? Like if you start a business and it doesn't bring you any profit, how long will you continue before you think of another alternative? That's my question. Lawrence, you want to respond? Uh, so I have the second question, the how long can you continue without making profits? And the first question is what? Start a business without a capital. Yes, I mean, we've, we've said a lot about sources of funding. How do you get funding? You mentioned the three Fs. You mentioned bootstrapping yourself, like saving money to make sure that you save you save for the business. I've had friends who, were, who had employment and they saved money to start their own company. They are bootstrapping. That is good. And I mentioned other sources like partnership, competitions, collaborations. Those are some of the ways. With even American spaces, tech hubs, there are a lot of, these are some of the ways that you can start your business. And how long should you run? You yourself, there's something we call uh, uh, your runway, like how much can you take? I mean, as you're growing your business, you look at your break even point, where your expenses and then your revenue matches. How long can you run to ensure that? But you can't say that you've started a business five years and you can't you you can't cover your additional costs at all. I mean, if you are a millionaire, fine. But if you are starting from scratch, I think that you should really think about what you are doing. Like five years, six years, seven years. You can't cover your basic. You should be able to cover your additional costs, your overhead costs, pay your rent, pay your salaries, do other things. At least be able to cover that. If you are not able to cover that, then I would suggest that you really think about the business you are into. If there's a need for you to close down the business, go and look for employment and learn. After a while, then you come back to do to do the business. But think about at what point will you make profit? Or will you break even? There's a break even point where your expenses are equal to your income. At least you are not making any money, but you have broken even. And those are some of the things that you need to consider. If you are not breaking even, you are making losses for a very long period of time. You are a human being. I mean, if I'm an, an investor, I won't continue to invest in your business. I will definitely withdraw my funding from your business. Because I don't know. One of the things that failure teaches, it gives you lessons. Like year one, you haven't done much. Lessons, your ability to really gather those lessons and just apply it and do things differently is what makes you an excellent entrepreneur. But if you are not learning at all, you are such a, you, are, you, are, Charlie, you have the passion, you are just into it. I'm doing business, you are moving around, doing business, taking people's money. At a point, they will just say that you are not profitable. We are all humans. At a point, they will give up on you. So look at these factors. See when you can break even and work towards it. And hopefully, you survive. Thank you so much. All right. Let's go to Medigo Radio and go to Shumon. Let's go ahead. Don't close that. Yes. Really? Wait, wait. The mic is open. Well, I'm really so happy to hear all these stories, but um, I'm asking area of the, the funding. We have family, we have friends, and we have food. Is that poor, that food, what really matters? I want you to explain more to Sorry, Medubu, it's breaking. We can't hear you. He said you should explain fools. You said family, friends, but you should explain fools. F O O L S, please. Okay, I have Florence over to you. So, I mean, it's just 
a name given to people who are willing. They are not your friends. They are not your family. They are people who trust in, they believe in what you do. And they are giving the money without any conditions and say that, look, take the money and go and use this for your bakery business, for go and use it for your, for your, like they are just people that, oh, maybe you meet someone by the way, say, oh, I'm doing, I'm into business and this is what I'm doing. Oh, okay. So what do you do? What do you need? Oh, I need a uh, 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 thousand naira to be able to start. I don't know how much thousand naira is or thousand Ghana cities or any amount. So I say, okay, oh, I'll support you with uh, uh, 100 Ghana cities or 100 naira. I mean, the person doesn't really, you don't have any good rapport. We don't know the person, but the person say, look, I'll give you the money. Such a bill is, 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 is a business term. It doesn't mean the person is is working around us, but the person just doesn't mind giving you the money to do anything with it, you do with it without any condition or hesitation. That's what I mean. That's what the business in business terms you refer to. Look for those people, look for the family, look for friends, and look for the 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 fools that want to be. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. Let's go to Oshobo now. Right. All right, good afternoon. My name is Moko uh, Chachijoki. But uh, in this aspect, I just want to really ask one question, and I've been asking this question. Uh, I've been running a social enterprise for over three years, but there is this one challenge that we have been facing, and that challenge is those who have gone ahead of us for over 10 years. And people like us who have been uh, about three years back or two years or a year back. How do we bridge that gap? Because we are all talking about the same thing. But the thing is, when we need these people to help us upskill, when we need these people to help pull us up, we don't see them. We don't have access to them. For example, now, uh, I'm using that as an example. I am running a social enterprise and I'm doing things that are legitimate, right? And I need American space to help pull me out from where I am to where I'm supposed to be and where I can actually take up from. So I am looking forward to have a very good answer in response to this. How do we meet these people for them to help pull us up from where we are to where we wish to be? And then from there we can take up. Uh, I think that's the very big barrier that I look forward to hear us uh, speak on. Thank you. All right. Emeka, do you want to respond to that, please? Yeah, my brother from Oshobo, I think, number one, uh, as a social enterprise, I'm wondering if you are the only one in Oshobo, and I think you're not. So if you can, do you know other people that you can gather, come together and organize yourself together? I've mentioned organizing is important because if you organize and you are, you are, you are also talking to other people with the same vision and that have the same social enterprise as yours, then you can now also plan or towards having a networking meeting with a lot of people who you call mentors or the people that you think they have excelled for the past 20 years. Yes, American Center can do programs, but you don't need to wait for American Center before these things are already uh, been in place. Have you heard, are you a Christian, for example? Sorry, I'm uh, for the Muslim brother. There's a full gospel businessman fellowship. Have you heard about it before? Some of those people you are looking for attend, could attend any of those full gospel businessmen fellowship. And from there, you can talk to them. There are other avenues too. Um, there are other things like um, town hall meetings. I don't know what happens in, in Oshobo, but I think there should be some sort of business meetings that are taking place other than in, in, in Abuja. But I think, first of all, social enterprise like yours should organize among yourself to list the companies and the people you're looking for. There's a way the corner, uh, the American corner can assist to have a meeting between um, startups and um, mentors or people that have excelled in business in Oshobo. That would be a great idea. Thank you. Uh, I just want to add. Go ahead. Uh, so look, we must also call a spade a spade. These people are busy people. Mm -hmm. They don't really necessarily need you. You need them. 
And so you have to make sure that you make yourself available where they are. Or you also have something that they need or they can discuss with you. And find them where you will find them. Because let's accept, people also, as they go higher, they also have equally busy life. Yeah. And so you really need to make sure that look, you 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 either do something, find a way of connecting with them where it will also be convenient for them. We I would like to mentor as many people as I want, but the real issue is that am I available to mentor maybe twenty people, thirty people? We must be frank. And so as time goes on, let's make sure that. We make ourselves available. Maybe you meet them at an event where they are more relaxed, they can talk to you. And you find, oh, do they you go to their places? Ah, are there some events as the secretary as and you'll be surprised that people will be you'll be willing to find out this information and it will be helpful. Thank you so much, Florence. Thank you so much for adding that. Um Samuel, do we have questions on Facebook? Uh, the questions that we have have already been taken care of. I was talking about funding as well as um, gender stereotype. I think we've dealt with it extensively. Um, so I think we can go to, is there another one from the show? Bo? No, no more questions. Go ahead and thank our speakers for today. And if there are any announcements, please go ahead and call them out. All right, thank you very much. You know, it's a very, okay, I can see somebody standing up in Oshobo. Yes, sir. Yes, Oshobo, do you sir. have something? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, yes sir. Why? Uh, thank you very much. Very quick uh, one, please. Um, I just want to ask a question about um, team building as an entrepreneur. Uh, what are the insights can you want who's just um, trying to form a team for his business and um, um, what can be this um, profit sharing ratio for the team and um, how do we also be when we have investors who invest in our business and um, all about team share, team building, that is what I'm asking because I'm looking at um, forming a, a team for my business. I've been doing the business for over three to four years now and it's fine, but I discovered that I need other people into the into the business at least to help me with some tax. So I felt it is um, by building a team that could do this. And um, so what are the insights you can give one who wants to um, form a team for your business? Thank you very much. Like partnership and, uh, and then angel investors, those are sort of things. Over to you. Uh, Florence, you might want to start then and make a round up. I mean, one of the key people you need on your team is somebody who can sell your product. Or if you, so when you are starting, you may not have money to hire different people for different roles. So for instance, you your if you have seen CEOs when they start, there are the people doing going for pitching, there are the people doing the marketing, because there is something called lean startup. When you are starting a business, your budget is lean. You must run as lean as possible. You can't hire multiple people. And also, a startup, you must work with people that you also have good chemistry. I've seen startups that they start, then along the line, there is friction about money, about who this person is getting too much money, and then the thing breaks up and down. The company is, 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 is not really in shape. And so some of these things is like there are things that you need to think about when you are starting. What are the key roles that you need to fill? And who can fill this key role? Can the person survive on a lean budget and sacrifice and take equity instead of salary? These are some of the debates that you need to have when you are starting your company. I don't think I have. I think okay. I'm okay with it. Yeah, Florence's comment is okay. Yeah. You're okay? Yeah, I'm okay. All right, thank you very much. Um, just about, I think that was last week, somebody called me and said, um, a company called him, and incidentally, he had his uh, tech skills, and they were offering him equity, 
And I told him, I said, don't just stay at the level of equity because what you are bringing to the table is actually going to scale the business. So you have to really also ask for more, uh, ask for money because you're going to be running a lot of um, uh, expenses. And at the end of the day, the person was able to pitch um, money per month. And at the end of the day, of course, they said yes to it because they needed the person so much. So you have so much to leverage on, but you also have to read, you have to learn. And there's so many videos, so many training packages all over the place. I would like to thank our speakers for today. Let me start with Florence. Florence, we've had a wonderful time with you. Uh, we are so grateful joining us from American Corner in Gogba, in Ghana. Thank you very much. Uh, Emeka Dero, we are so grateful. You've had a serious color to the closing ceremony and we really gained a lot from your wealth of experience. So all our participants, if you enjoyed today's meeting and closing of today, I want you to clap your hands, clap your hands and appreciate our speakers for today. Everybody, let's see you clap your hands. Thank you very, very much. Um, the next is we are going to give you an announcement and I want you to remember the announcement we've been talking about. We've been asking you to please remember to register. Go on our Facebook page. This is a follow-on entrepreneurship training program. Make sure that you register and invite your friends. Invite your friends. Invite your friends. I want you to be able to invite your friends. Then we'll be able to enjoy the whole program together. It's starting on November 17th, uh, November uh, 21st, and I want you to make sure you are registered. Finally, we want to thank all the directors who have made this possible and all the volunteers who have made it also possible, those who have supported our directors in making sure that we all stay tuned in all American spaces all across West Africa. In particular, we want to thank Michelle. Michelle Cloud is the reps in charge of American spaces in Anglophone uh, West Africa. Without her, we would not have been able to get this done. So we thank you. We also thank uh, Peter Boba, who is the cultural affairs officer in uh, Embassy in Abuja. Thank you very much. And for all who have made this very, very uh, possible, we appreciate you all. And lastly, Dan, we want to thank you for all the hard work you've done so well. It actually did all the heavy lifting. Uh, we appreciate you. And please enjoy your weekend, everybody. Hope to see you next week. Bye-bye to you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Please remember to send the names of your participants for the certificates of attendance. Alright, thank you very much, sir.